What's up you guys, it's Deepo here and today I'm going to show you how to give this paint dripping effect to your photos in Photoshop. So this tutorial was requested by one of our viewers. So there you go my friend, hope you find it helpful. Also if you have any tutorial requests then you can drop them in the comments below. We will surely try to create videos on those as well. Now if you want to keep learning how to create such cool things in Photoshop for free, then make sure you smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. So without wasting any more time of yours, let's get started. So let's first start by creating a new document so for that go to file and then select the option as new after that you can set the width and height accordingly or else you can set it as follows width as around 3840 pixels height as around 2160 pixels and then set the resolution as 300 pixels per inch and then click on create now the next step we need to do is bring in our model image so for that go to file and then select the option as place embedded after that you can select any model image of your choice download link for the image i'm choosing is in the description below and then click on the option as place and then you can click on the stick icon in order to place it. Now the next thing we will be doing is separating out the model and the background into two different layers. So for that we need to get the selection of the model in the image. Now there are two different methods in order to get the selection. One is using quick selection tool and the other is using pen tool. Now for this tutorial I'll be going ahead with the pen tool. But if you want a faster selection then you can definitely use quick selection tool. It's totally your choice. So now let's select the pen tool. And then click on the drop down over here and then make sure that the path option has been selected. Now using the pen tool you need to make the path around the model as follows. Now let me just zoom into the image in order to get a perfect path. Now while making the path you need to make sure that you are little bit inside of the edge. So once your path is ready after that you can right click inside of the path and then select the option as make selection. And then set the feather radius as 1 pixels and then click on OK. Now we need to invert this selection so for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus Shift plus I in order to invert it. After that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus J in order to create a duplicate of the selection into a new layer. So now as you can see a new layer has been created with just that of the selection in it. Now let me just hide the two layers below it in order to show it to you. So now as you can see we have separated out the model into a new layer. Now let me just unhide the two layers again. And then let me just rename this layer to model. After that make the original layer active by clicking on it. Now we need to fill this entire layer with that of the background. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac and then click on the icon of the model layer which will again give you the selection of the model. After that go to select and then modify and then select the option as expand. After that set the expand by to 20 pixels and then click on OK. So now as you can see your selection has been expanded after that right click on the layer and then select the option as rasterize layer and then you can select the rectangular marquee tool and then right click inside of the selection and then select the option as fill after that set the contents as content aware and then click on ok now let me just hide the model layer in order to show you the effect of the step we just did so for that clicking on the icon so now as you can see now that portion of the selection has been filled with that of the background. Now let me just again unhide the model layer by clicking on the checkbox. After that you can press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus D in order to deselect the selection. And now using the rectangular marquee tool you need to do the same thing for the two sides over here. So let me just do that. So now as you can see now we have this layer filled with that of a complete background. Now let me just rename this layer. Also I would like the background which was present in the original image so I have kept the same but if you do not like the background which is present in your image then you can fill this layer with that of a nice gradient color. Now after that make the model layer active by clicking on it. And then we need to place this model layer inside of a group so for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus G in order to place it inside of a group. So now as you can see now our model layer has been placed inside of this group. Now after that let's start with a paint dripping effect so for that go to file and then select the option as place embedded. Now over here you can select any paint dripping image of your choice. Download link for the paint dripping image I am choosing is in the description below. And then select the option as place. And then you need to scale down this image and place it as follows. So once the scaling looks proper after that you can click on the stick icon in order to place it. So as you can see this image is not covering the entire model. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus J in order to create a duplicate of this layer. After that select move tool. And then press shift and then drag the duplicate image as follows. By pressing shift you drag it in a straight line. 
So now this is looking proper. Now after that, let's merge the two layers into a single group. So for that, press Ctrl or Command on Mac and then click on the layer below it, which will give you the selection of the layer below it, as well as keep the selection of the current layer active. And then press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus G in order to convert the selected layers into a group. After that, press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus T in order to bring up the transform tool. And then you can scale down the image as follows. So now this is looking perfect. After that, you can click on the stick icon in order to place it. Now we need to rasterize this group, but first before that let's create a duplicate of this group by pressing Ctrl or Command on Mac plus J and then press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus E in order to convert the duplicate group layer into a rasterized layer. Now we will be using the original group as a backup. In case we do something wrong, we won't have to start from scratch. So for that, let me just hide that group by clicking on the icon. Now we need to get the selection of this rasterized layer. So for that, press Ctrl or Command on Mac and then click on the icon of the rasterized layer, which will give you the selection of it. After that, make the group 1 layer active by clicking on it. And then click on Add Layer Mask icon, which will create a mask with that of the current selection. But now we want the invert of this mask. So for that, press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus I in order to invert it. And then hide the group to copy layer by clicking on the R icon. So now as you can see now it has started to look like a paint dripping effect. Now after that we need to remove the extra parts of the model over here. So for that make the mask of the group layer active by clicking on it. And then select brush tool. After that select the brush as hard round. After that set the opacity of the brush tool to 100% and then set the flow to 100% as well. And then set the foreground color to black and then click on OK. And then using the brush tool you need to click and hover over the areas which you want to remove. You can increase and decrease the size of the brush using the square bracket keys of your keyboard. So now as you can see now it is looking proper and after that we need to scale it up and place it properly. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus T in order to bring up the transform tool and then scale up the image as follows. After that you can click on the stick icon in order to place it. Now the next thing we will be doing is adding a white stroke just around the model. So for that make the model image layer which is inside of the group active and then click on add layer style option and then select the option as stroke. After that you can set the size of the stroke as 10 pixels, position as outside, blend mode as normal, opacity as 100%, fill type as color and then click on the color icon and then set the color as white and then click on OK. After that you can click on OK. So now as you can see it has added the stroke just around the model and not the dripping part over here. Now the next thing we will be doing is giving this dripping kind of thing a realistic touch. So for that make the group 1 layer active by clicking on it and then click on add layer style option and then select the option as drop shadow. After that you can set the blend mode as multiply, color as black and then click on ok, opacity as 50%, angle as 90 degree, make sure you tick this use global light option and then set the distance as 10 pixels, spread as 5% and then size as 10 pixels. After that you can keep the rest of the settings as default. Now let me show you the before and after of this drop shadow. So this was the before and now this is the after. And then you need to select the bevel and emboss option and then set the style as in a bevel. Technique as smooth, depth as 150%, direction as up, size to 30 pixels, soften as 0 pixels, set the angle as 90 degree, make sure you tick this use global light option, altitude as 30 degree, gloss contour as linear, make sure you tick this anti alias option, set the blend mode of the highlight mode to screen, color to white and then click on ok and then set the opacity of the highlight mode to 100%, set the blend mode of the shadow mode to multiply color as black and then click on ok and then set the opacity of the shadow mode to 20%. Now let me show you the before and after of this bevel and emboss. So this was the before and now this is the after. So as you can see it gives such a nice realistic touch to this dripping paint over here. After that you can click on this ok. Now let me show you the before and after of the overall effect. So this was the before and now this is the after. So now as you can see now the dripping part is looking perfect over here but as you can see the effects which we have just applied we have applied it to the whole image but we don't require it for the whole image we just require it for the dripping part over here. Now in order to solve that thing let me just minimize this group for a moment and then let's create a duplicate of this group by pressing Ctrl or Command on Mac plus J and then hide the original group by clicking on the icon and it will remain as a backup in case we do something wrong we won't have to start from scratch. After that you can right click on any of the effects and then select the option as create layers and then select the option as ok. So as you can see it has rasterized the effects into three different layers. The two layer will be for bevel and emboss and the one layer will be for drop shadow. Now let me just make the bevel and emboss shadows layer active by clicking on it. After that click on add layer mask icon 
and then make sure that your brush tool has been selected and the brush is set to hard round and the opacity and the flow is set to 100% as well after that make sure that your foreground color is also set to black and now using the brush tool you can hover over the upper parts of the area which you want to remove now let me show you the before and after of this layer mask so this was the before and now this is the after now we need to apply the same mask to the highlights portion over here as well so for that press alt and then drag this mask to the layer below it so now as you can see now that mask has been duplicated to this highlights layer as well now after that we need to apply the same mask to this drop shadow layer as well so let me just do that so now as you can see now our paint dripping effect is completely ready now let's give some splatter effect in the background in order to make it look more proper so for that go at the bottom and then make the background layer active by clicking on it and then create a new layer by clicking on create new layer icon after that select brush tool and then click on the toggle brush panel icon after that go at the brushes and then select any splatter brushes from it downloading for the splatter brushes i'm using is in the description below after that go back to again brush settings now over here again set the opacity and the flow of the brush to 100% after that click on the color icon and then set the color of the splatter which you would like to be displayed i'm setting the color as e6 e6 e8 and then click on okay and then using the splatter brush you need to click on the area where you want to add splatter after that let me just select a different splatter brush so like this you can keep on selecting different types of splatter brushes and then try to create the best effect accordingly so now as you can see now it is looking better and after that let me just close this brush panel so yeah that's it guys that's the final image i hope you guys like this video on how to give this paint dripping effect to your photos in photoshop now if you guys like this video then give us a thumbs up it helps the youtube algorithm in spreading the video also you can share it to the ones who might be interested in such videos and subscribe to the channel for more videos in photoshop thanks for watching bye bye